This is part 20 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is controller and its role in ASP.NET Core MVC. In simple terms, a controller in MVC is a class that derives from the framework's controller base class and the name of the controller class is usually suffixed with this word controller. For example, home controller, employees controller, products controller, etc. When a request from the browser arrives at our application, it is this controller in the MVC design pattern that handles the incoming HTTP request and responds to that user action. A controller class usually has a set of public methods. These public methods within the controller are called as action methods. At the moment, within our home controller, we only have one public method, which is index. So it is these action methods within the controller that handle and process the incoming HTTP requests. Now, let's say we opened our favorite browser and in the address bar, we typed this URL, localhost for slash home for slash details. When this request arrives at our ASP.NET Core MVC application, it is the controller that handles this incoming HTTP request. This URL segment slash home slash details is mapped to the details public action method within the home controller class. This mapping is done by routing rules defined in our application. We'll discuss routing in detail in our upcoming videos. For now, understand this URL segment that is slash home slash details is mapped to the details action method within the home controller. At the moment, within our application, in the home controller, we only have index action method. Let's also create details action method. I'm going to make a copy of this and then change the name of the method to details. We want this details action method to retrieve a specific employee details and display those details on the browser. So as part of processing this request, the controller also builds a model. In our case, the model is the employee class. If you recollect from our previous videos in this series, we already created this employee model class. So within the details action method within our home controller, first let's create the employee model object. It is this I employee repository service that is responsible for retrieving employee data. So our home controller has a dependency on this I employee repository service. So this service is injected into the home controller using the constructor. This is called dependency injection and we discussed dependency injection in detail in our previous video. Now I'm going to make this private field read only. This is a good practice because it prevents accidentally assigning another value to this private field, maybe inside another method within the controller. Now let's use this injected I employee repository service and then retrieve employee details whose ID is one. At the moment, we have the employee ID hard coded to one. In our upcoming videos in the series, we'll discuss how to dynamically retrieve the employee ID value from the URL instead of hard coding it like this. Once the controller has the required model data, the controller may choose to return this model data to the caller if we are building an API or a RESTful service. For a minute, let's assume we are building an API and we want to return this model data in JSON format to whoever made this request. Now to be able to return JSON data, I'm going to use JSON method and to it, let's pass our model object. And from the IntelliSense, as you can see, this method returns JSON result. So let's change the return type of this method to JSON result. With all these changes in place, let's run our application. Change the URL to slash home slash details. Notice we see JSON data as expected. Notice the details action method explicitly returns JSON formatted data. This is okay if you want your details action to always return JSON data. This approach does not respect content negotiation and it ignores the incoming request accept header. Now, if you're new to the concept of content negotiation and accept header, we'll discuss them in detail when we discuss building RESTful services. Now, if you want your details action to respect content negotiation, then change the return type here to object result and build a new 
object result object and to it pass the model object. Let's build our solution. I have this tool called Fiddler running on my machine. Fiddler is a free tool to test our services. What we want to do now is issue a request to this URL. So let's copy and paste that same URL in Fiddler here. We want to issue a GET request, so GET is selected. Now we are using Fiddler because we want to be able to set accept header and specify that we want data in XML format. So we set the accept header to application for slash XML and then click the execute button. Request completed. And if we look at the response right here, notice on the raw tab, we can see the data is still in JSON format. This is because at the moment within our application, we don't have the required service configured. To be able to return data in XML format, our application need to have XML serializer format service added. We do that in startup.cs file. So within configure services method to this add MVC method, we chain another method and that is add XML serializer formatters method. So with this change in place, let's issue the same request again. Notice the accept header is still set to application for slash XML. So when I click the execute button, request completed successfully. And when we inspect the response that we get, notice the data is in XML format as expected. In our case, we're not building a web API. We're building an MVC web application. So we want a view to present the model data to the user. So after the controller has built the model, it also selects a view and passes the model data to the view. The view then generates the required HTML to present that model data. This HTML is then sent over the network to the user who made that request. So from the details action method from our home controller, we want to return a view. So instead of using new object result here, we're going to use the view method. And from the IntelliSense, you can see this view method returns view result. So let's change the return type of this method to view result. With this change in place, when we reload the web page, Notice we have an error. It is basically complaining it cannot find this view file details.cshtml. We'll discuss views in our next video. When a request from the browser arrives at our application, it is the controller in the MVC design pattern that handles the incoming HTTP request and responds to the user action. As part of processing the incoming request, the controller builds the model and simply returns that model data to the caller if we are building an API. So in the case of an API, we do not have a view. We just have the controller and the model. In case of an MVC web application, in addition to building the model, the controller also selects a view and passes the model data to the view. The view then generates the required HTML to present that model data. This HTML is then sent over the network to the user who made that request. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.